Hello, hello. Oh, so happy to welcome you today on our next webinar. Today, Push Push has Optimonk to talk about e-commerce customers' lifetime value. Hope it will be as exciting as ever. And let me start by introducing our, our today's speaker, Chaba Zaido, CMO and founder of Optimonk. Chaba, will you please say a couple of words about your company? Yeah, so thank you very much. So hi, everyone. Um, actually, I'm one of the co-founders of Optimonk, and um, I've been into e-commerce for more than 16 years. Actually, it's a long time. Uh, we started building e-commerce sites and built and worked with several thousands of companies. And working with all these e-commerce merchants uh, was born the realization that uh, small merchants, especially lack the need uh, to really personalize their customer experience and to optimize their conversion rates. So that's why Optimum was born more than seven years ago. And well, here I am. Now we are working with more than 20,000 uh, e-commerce brands all over the world. So happy to have you today here. And our second speaker will be me, Elena, Content Marketing Manager of Push Whoosh. If you're not quite familiar with our brand yet, we are a mobile-driven customer engagement platform that helps customers across the industries, including e-commerce, um, with push notifications, in-app messages, email, and as an e-commerce marketer, you might be also interested in, in connecting WhatsApp and SMS as channels, which is also available through our platform. So we'll be happy to present some tactics to you that you will find handy. And here is our today's agenda. To begin with, we'll um, walk through once again on the importance of customer lifetime value, especially in our today's next normal for e-commerce. And we'll take you through some of the most useful uh, cases for the web and mobile. And of course, uh, please prepare your questions, whatever you have on the topic of e-commerce growth and especially customer lifetime value. We'll make time for your questions at the end in our regular Q&A session. So, if you've joined us today for a webinar on customer lifetime value, I may assume that you are quite confident that this is going to be your target metric, that this is what you're going to focus on in your ongoing campaigns. But Nevertheless, I suggest we start by taking a step back, uh, sort of zooming out and having an overview of the state of the e-commerce industry. You may remember that on the onset of the pandemic, the growth of e-commerce was the talk of the town, any town that was hit by the lockdowns. And probably you even recognize yourself in the person in this picture on this slide, hiding behind the door, waiting for his parcel to be delivered in the most safe way, in the contactless way, so that you don't have any contact either with a salesperson or with a delivery person. This was our common reality. And during that time, indeed, e-commerce have grown, but what kind of growth it was? It turned out that those who saw the biggest growth in online also saw the biggest decline in margin. So that has taught us that, once again, we don't want any kind of growth. We want the most sustainable, the healthiest kind of growth, the one that allows us to earn the highest possible value from each customer and each purchase. And here's some interesting chart I would like to share with you. So here you can see the percentage of e-commerce in the total retail sales. And as you can see from the year 2000 until the pandemic 2020, there was quite a stable, very confident growth. But then there was a huge peak, what we all saw as this explosive growth of e-commerce. And as we're living now in 2022, well, I can't say that there is no growth at all because the, you can see this uh, graph following the same trajectory, the same growth path, but there is no more explosive growth. This means you may not have such a great flow of customers, especially the new customers, meaning you have to 
derive the highest value from each customer you have already acquired. And this is interesting because we've noticed a similar trend in our uh, internal push wishes research. Uh, we're sharing it with you by the link on this slide. We're going to share the slide so you may have a closer look at everything we're sharing here. And we've even noticed uh, that even though that Black Friday period, even that holiday season, didn't result in such growth as it did in 2020 and 2020, um, yeah, the year of 2020. Already in 2021, we saw a sort of a decline compared to the previous year. So this means we have to be very attentive of what we invest in each customer and what we gain from them. And another interesting point is that much of the e-commerce growth that happened at the pandemic uh, was due to the increase in desktop traffic. So here we have the data from SEMRAS Trends, and we see that the time before the pandemic, it was, it was a sort of a decrease in the desktop traffic. But at those months of the pandemic, all of a sudden, desktop traffic try, um, recommenced to gain popularity. And it was due to the reason that people were stuck in their homes, they were glued to their desktop screens. And as you can imagine, as there are no more that much of uh, lockdown restrictions and people are going out everywhere, once again, they're using their phones wherever they are, you won't try to engage them on mobile devices. You want your, you want your growth that happened probably thanks to the desktop to be backed up by mobile engagement now. So finally, let's get to the exact tactics that will help you to boost your customer lifetime value. And I'm passing the mic to Chaba here. Thank you. So uh, to increase lifetime and increase retention, one of the basic requirements all brands uh, need is actually a list. You need a direct communication channel to your customers, be it email, SMS, push notification, or messenger. And um, well, as you probably know, pop-ups are among the most efficient tools to uh, build any of these lists. Uh, having a great exit intent offer is, uh, I would say, it's one of the most efficient way to do this. Uh, like this one with uh, the UD. Um, to have a great and well converting uh, exit in that pop up, you basically you need a strong and good offer. Uh, you need to present it uh, in a single, in a, in a, in a simple enough uh, way. And uh, you need to present it at just the right uh, moment, preferably not as a welcome message, but for example, as an exit uh, message. Um, and the offer doesn't uh, necessarily have to be uh, a 15 or a, or, a, or a $25 off. It doesn't have to be a discount. Uh, next, Elena, please. Uh, but it could be, of course, some kind of context, uh, for example, uh, or it could be an ebook, especially for uh, early stage visitors, for low intent visitors who are not ready to buy. Uh, offering an incentive, uh, a chance to win, for example, can often uh, work much better than a fixed uh, coupon code. Uh, next, please. Uh, it could be even better if you offer them some kind of exciting game, for example, a spin to wheel or a scratch card uh, pop up like this. These messages can often convert above 15%, which are well, pretty, pretty nice numbers, considering that out of 100 people, you will get the direct email or SMS number of more than 15 people. Or I can uh, show you one of our most, uh, our latest use cases, uh, which is the conversational pop-up. Next, please. Uh, basically, instead of uh, just offering, so this is, this is a regular uh, accident pop-up. Get 15% off of your first order. Uh, and with it, as you can see, if you are targeting it right, you can get 7 8%, which is also uh, quite good. But uh, if you uh, present it first as a question uh, and you present it as a way that you want to help, hey, for example, what are you looking for? What problem are you trying to solve? Um, and you just request one question, uh, sorry, one click uh, 
and you incentivize this click with, uh, with this 15% uh, off, then you can get much better numbers. These are actual numbers. As you can see, uh, the, uh, the pop-up on the right has uh, more than 20% uh, uh, conversion rate. And if you again uh, just click one more, Elena, you will see that it will not only improve the conversion rate of the pop-up, but it will also improve the actual assisted revenue uh, of this pop-up. So uh, the amount of uh, uh, um, the amount of actual revenue you are generating with with these messages. All right. So let me hand it back to you. Looks amazing. I hope our listeners are taking notes on this conversion driving ideas and yeah actually uh, getting users to opt in is your first step to get to that engagement on mobile as well so here uh, once again inside the app you may want to show an opt-in message as well and here we have an example from the iHerb app suggesting users to opt in either for push notifications or emails. And here, what is nice is that you give your customers an option. This is what they love. And if, even if, they ha if they've chosen not to subscribe to your emails, you can still include a similar offer to their activation email because you have the right to send them a registration confirmation email, but to have the permission to send further marketing communications. You have to ask their permissions for that. And this is what you're doing here. And so that you know what kind of numbers you may expect in terms of the opt-in rate on your, in your mobile app, uh, here is what we found in our push wishes uh, data study. Once again, I'm linking to the source to you. You may have a closer look um, after we've finished. And the question may be, so, okay, you've got this quite impressive number of users opted in for your notifications or for your emails. Now you want to deliver you want the promise you've made in your opt-in screen. And here's where personalization steps in. And from, from research, we know that personalization is expected and even welcomed by customers when it comes to offering relevant products or offering relevant messaging. This is what we want to target. This is what we achieve with personalization. So how do we do it? The first option is to ask your customers directly what their preferences are. And here's a great example, an idea for you, for your onboarding in your e-commerce app, coming from our customer Bantoa. Banto is uh, oriented on fashion e-commerce. So as part of the onboarding flow, they ask multiple questions on their users' favorite colors, on what kind of clothes they would never put on, on their budget, of course, on their normal size. So anything that will work for Banto and for their customers as well. And the second option is not to ask your customers directly, but watch track and act upon their real behavior. So whatever kind of actions they take in the app, if they viewed any product, if they've put any products in their cards, if they've actually purchased these products. And the same goes about the way they react on your messaging. So you may want to choose if they've actually received your message, if they've actually opened your push notification. So. Each of these is possible with our push push customer journey builder tool. I'm showing it to you on this slide. And what kind of result can you achieve with this? We started with this Bantoa case study. And as it's a case study, I can show some results with you. And these are probably the most impressive CTRs you may get for an e-commerce app or maybe even for any kind of app. Because with this kind of personalization, um, Bantor has achieved their CTRs up to 91.9%. That's impressive. Here, for example, uh, there is a push notification apparently oriented on those who've stated they're of school or university age. So they might be interested in, in, something, in something of that kind. And another example is apparently coming 
to those customers who were interested in tuning up their summer out outfits. And once again, thanks to beautiful segmentation that Bantoa did, they've achieved high CTRs. And by this point, I can be pretty sure that you're willing to achieve such results for you as well. So to confirm that personalization works for you once again, uh, here is uh, some information on which stages of the customer lifecycle personalization may positively influence. You can see that mainly on all, all the main stages that you may want to target. So personalization may help your customers to make a purchase decision. They may repurchase from you if they've received relevant messages from you. And they may even recommend your brand to their friends, which means that by relevant interaction with your current customer, you may even increase your customer base. So uh, personalization is basically about sending the right message to the right people at the right moment. Um, and targeting the right users actually is one of the, the most important points. Um, the first step is to just start, uh, sorry, to stop uh, broadcasting the same message to everyone. Here we have this quite generic exit that offer offering 10% off to your customers. If we uh, show it to everyone, next please, I don't know. Uh, if you show it to everyone, like after like, like a welcome message to all the new visitors, we will get a 3% conversion rate on average. Next please, yes. Uh, but if you just make some very minor uh, changes on this one, uh, like uh, changing it to exit intent and showing it, uh, showing it only to those visitors who have uh, already put something in the cart, then the conversion rate will go up to uh, 15%. So we get a 400% increase just by changing the targeting settings and still showing the exact same message. Of course, many merchants are afraid that, all right, now that I've changed this, uh, I narrowed down this, uh, the targeting of this message, now I will, most of my visitors will not see this message, which is right. But of course, you don't have to target all the users with the same, same message. You can show this message to the cart abandoners. And you can show a different message for, for example, for low intent visitors. As I just mentioned, uh, for uh, low intent visitors, you usually respond better to some kind of gamification, some, some kind of other contest. Or for returning visitors, you can show, for example, the previously viewed products. You can welcome back that, hey, are you still interested in these products? And you can just dynamically show those products which they have uh, seen in their previous session. Basically, you can target this, uh, the right users with the right message. And this is just the very beginning. Then the next stage of personalization is to even for the same users, for example, all the new users visiting your homepage, you can still differentiate, you can still personalize your message. Instead of showing the same generic get 20% off uh, message, uh, you can show a different personalized message to some sub-segment of your visitors. So for example, for those visitors, if you have a lot of people coming from some uh, visitor sources, for example, from Forbes magazine, for example, then you can personalize this message based on this information and you can present this much more specific, much more personalized than, uh, message. And people, visitors coming from Forbes will definitely feel more special and more welcome by this message. And not only your conversion rate will go up, but your users will also get a much better user experience again, because they will feel that they are more special. And it doesn't have to stop here. You can basically personalize your messages on any uh, first party data. Basically, for example, if you are targeting, next please, if you are using Facebook ads, for example, and you are um, showing ads to different subsegments, for example, for males or females, or uh, people with a problem of weight loss, or people with problems of uh, who need better sleep, um, you can just with the right UTM parameters, just, just uh, 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 using the right 
uh, 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 URLs, you can show a different message to any of these users. And basically, you can get welcome people, or you can do a show exit messages, or you can show cart abundant messages personalized based on these problems or these demographic informations you have from these customers. Basically, the only limit is your, uh, your imagination and, of course, your time and effort. Um, with all kind of personalization, your conversion rates usually go up and the user experience of your users improves. Elena? Yeah, thank you. And one more thing you can do, uh, apart from choosing the right segment and personalizing the message uh, you prefer to, to show to this segment, is going cross-channel in order to get your message to be heard. So what I mean by this is that you've chosen your target segment. So your goal is to reach each customer in this segment. And you know that customers may react differently. For example, they, you've chosen to send them a push notification, but are they actually reachable by this channel? Maybe they haven't even subscribed to this channel or any sort of unreachability may happen here. So if they are available, you will send them this push notification. But what if they are not? Then you may try to track if they are reachable by an alternative channel, such as email. And then once again, if they are reachable by email, you will send them a message there. And if they are not, you may try to wait until they open your app the next time and you'll show them the same offer you previously sent to your other groups of the segment via other channels, but you'll present this offer directly in the app in the form of an in-app message. And you may even go further and verify if the push notification you sent was actually opened. And if it was, you may continue and give a bit more detail on the offer. And if it was not, you may even send another push. Maybe there will be any different kind of promotion that will interest you users better and that they will open eventually. And an interesting thing about customer lifetime value is that it is actually compiled of several different metrics. And to sort of structureize your campaigns, your work, you may want to target each of these metrics separately in different campaigns so that ultimately you reach the increase in your main metrics, such as customer lifetime value. So the most typical example, the most typical thing to do is to grow your average order value. And also typical use cases are upselling and cross-selling to your customers. And here we have examples from Larry Dude app. And as someone who's had quite a few years in content marketing, I'm fascinated by this push notification they use for upselling their customers. So here they've managed to apply all the best practices for push notifications, such as they're creating the sense of urgency. You see this uh, capital letters, limited time offer. They, they're even using uh, red siren emojis here. And by the way, Pushwash team has found that emojis do increase push notification CTRs. What they're doing next, they're playing the popular free delivery cut, but they're pursuing the upsell purpose here. So they only offer free delivery to those whose order value is higher than a certain amount of money. And to finalize the message, they're emphasizing once again that it's a limited time offer. It's going to finish on Tuesday. And another good example Larry Dude has for cross-selling is this in-app message. So as soon as I've added this beautiful blue dress to my basket, there is this pop-up that appears and suggests me to show the entire look we can see here. This converse, these earrings, whatever is, pr is present and may be relevant to me as a customer and that may contribute to the ultimately higher order value. 
Well, if we are talking about pop-ups and upsell and cross-sell, uh, one of the classic ways to improve the average order value is the free shipping bar notification. Uh, where just uh, in the simplest way, you will, you can just remind the users that you will get free shipping above like a hundred dollars. Or a more advanced version, which you can see here, is to make it dynamic and basically change the value which you are presenting based on the current card value. If if there's only like um, six dollars in the card and the threshold of the free shipping is a hundred dollar, then you can present it only forty dollars away from free shipping. Or of course, another classic way is to as just just, just to, to upsell is to present some great offer at the right moment. It could be after someone uh, puts uh, something into their cart or someone is inactive or they are reading some material which resonates or which connects to this special offer. Or a less intrusive version is to just show people in a side message, in a sticky bar, some relevant products, like showing the most popular products. You can even show the most popular products within a category. If someone is, for example, browsing uh, like uh, earrings or, sorry, or, or rings, and uh, they are they are for they spend at least one minute on uh, this category page. Uh, this message can appear, and well, they can uh, show the visitors the most popular products. Usually, uh, these messages can improve the uh, average order by, uh, value uh, by more than uh, seven or eight percent, which doesn't seem to be a lot, but still seven or eight percent for each average order, uh, this is, is quite a big, it can be quite a big amount. Or um, let's see if we have some existing customers who are already purchased, who have already purchased uh, something before, and we don't want to necessarily present them any special offer or any discount. We can definitely welcome them with some, uh, with, with the latest, newest, most relevant offer to them. We have like a new bracelet, which we would like to uh, to uh, present or of course which we, I, I've already shown you is to remind them of what they have left off uh, in their previous purchase like Burberry does um, showing the top two or three uh, products which they visited in the previous session and helping them continue where they have left off is a very nice uh, way to actually um, continue their, their previous journey and uh, not let them actually uh, forget about these products which they have, uh, they, they have been interested before. Or, of course, since you don't have to sign them up for a list because you already uh, have them on your list, uh, uh, most likely, you can use this exit intent space basically to upsell or cross-sell with some relevant offers to these users. For example, hey, take a look at our most popular products before you go. And you can dynamically present the most popular products either in that category, which the user is actually interested in right now, or you can present just from the whole uh, store of yours, uh, the top, uh, the top uh, three uh, or top one product. Or um, to... Uh, to establish the next purchase, to get to make sure that people will return and uh, do a second uh, second purchase, one of the most effective way is uh, to ask them a survey or a questionnaire at the thank you page. So just when they 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 place their first order, hey, would you like twenty percent of your next order? Just fill out this form. And connecting this survey with an incentive for the next purchase, it will feel more earned for the users and they will be much more inclined to actually use this coupon code. And of course, you will also get some um, very important and interesting customer feedback uh, regarding, regard, regarding your um, user journey, your e-store, your, your whatever you are interested in to learn more about. Yeah, and when it comes to engaging and retaining your existing clients, you can actually do this from day one to almost eternity. So as your first welcome offer, you may want to encourage the first time conversion. You may want to activate them. You may want to call them to, to that desired 
conversion action. And you may want to continue it. And as you're gaining knowledge about what your customers prefer, about which kind of products they have already been interested in, which kind of products they may have purchased from you, you may target such messages even better, suggesting the most relevant offers for their repeat purchases. So uh, <laughs> my final mm -hmm. recommendation, basically a summary of what uh, I've been talking about, is to do not broadcast all your messages. To the, uh, don't broadcast the same pop-up to everyone. But rather, you should personalize your messages based on the life cycle, based on the awareness stage of your current visitors. And not only just you not only need to personalize it, but you, you uh, want to focus on the value creation. Um, instead of always trying to just sell or subscribe, you have to look out for the value for the customer and look out ways how you can improve their experience, how you can create more value. Uh, this mindset, this methodology is what I call customer value optimization. Basically, it's more like a mindset and less the methodology. Uh, it, the, the methods, the tactics, the tools used here are very similar to conversion rate optimization, but this is a more customer-focused approach. So if you want to read more about this, feel free to, 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 uh, to download my, uh, my ebook, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Customer Value Optimization. It's a short read, but I can assure you this is filled with a lot of practical insights about how you can create more value throughout the uh, user journey. Yeah, indeed. The highest value for the brand is born when a customer has got their value as well. And from the push wishes side, I can add that um, at the current state of the industry, what you want to do is maintain engaging your audience on mobile as, as well as on the web, if you're present on both channels um, equally. And also, I want to encourage you to go cross-channel and not just go cross-channel for the sake of it, but be proactive about this. As I've showed you this example of, um, of, a, of a messaging sequence where you try to detect whether your customers are actually present, are actually available on these channels, if this channel works the best for them. So you want to cater your customers where they are. And this is where a cross-channel strategy steps in. And finally, as we've talked about customer life and value, it's very important to um, make some to make this marketing journey for yourself and try to pursue one important metric at a time. So you may create a set of campaigns and well on some of them you will focus on average order value. In others you may want to focus on repeat purchase rate. And at the end, you will have your ultimate metric covered. You will have your customer lifetime value increased. So I was very happy to listen to the ideas that Chabar has shared from the OptiMonk experience. I was very happy to present some of the also mindsets and ideas for you. And hopefully you've got some questions that we may answer. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, uh, Elena. Thank you, Chava. I think I, I actually really loved the way you addressed different stages of the customer journey and at the same time combining web and the mobile. Uh, I think it was very useful for our audience. Uh, let me check um, the questions from the audience. I think there was, yeah, so here James is asking, uh, what if I target the purchase frequency keeping the ultimate lifetime value in mind. Can you please share some techniques? So speaking of the purchase frequency, um, well, you may try to pick the low hanging fruit and you know what it is in your e-commerce business? Most likely it will be abandoned cards. Um, I've seen some recent statistics that they may count by up to two-thirds of all the possible and all the unfortunately lost purchases 
So, and it happens for first time conversions as well as for repeat customers. So if your goal is to drive your, to drive repeat purchases, you may want to target those who abandon cards as well as you may try to track and follow up on those who abandoned product views or abandoned their favorites. Because in these cases, you may track the corresponding events. So you have some information on what kind of products will be relevant to these groups of customers and hopefully you will get them to convert. Uh, great. Uh, Chaba, do you, do you want to add something here? Yeah, just, uh, just on the pop-up side, the, the one of the basic segmentation is, of course, you have the new customers and you have the returning customers and you definitely want to present different uh, messages and different offers to these users. Uh, again, one another important segmentation is whether someone is a price sensitive customer or not. For those visitors who are returning visitors and who are uh, who've used the coupon before, so seem to be more price sensitive and more interested in using this kind of discounts, many of our merchants also present special offers and use uh, discounts more well, more efficiently and 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 and, and they uh, press it more. While on the other hand, for those visitors who well who purchased on their first purchase without any discount they usually uh, try to present offers which involve uh, less decrease in price and in roi and in margins uh, for example like the new products more connected products and any other uh, relevant offers that's interesting I hope this clears. yeah well, Chava, you actually mentioned um, discounts, so uh, I just wonder uh, how much, uh, uh, how big the discount should be for the first uh, time customers just to grow, you know, what do you think? Yeah, so uh, uh, most people believe that uh, uh, the more the discount, the better the conversion rate is. Uh, and while this is somewhat true, but only just up to the point. So there's a term called price elasticity, which uh, states uh, this fact. But after a certain point, after a certain threshold, usually the, the amount of discount will become just too, well, too weird, too, too uh, frightening for the users. And they will, we, we've seen examples of just uh, people and merchants uh, offering uh, too high discounts and actually decreasing the conversion rates. Mm -hmm. So in our experience, uh, offering a discount between 10 to 20 percent is usually just the optimal uh, limit. You don't have to go above that to reach optimal conversion uh, uh, rates with your opt-in pop-ups. Um, but below 10 percent, it's often too small. If, you, if it's just a one-digit discount, people will often feel that it's not worth sharing their private and sensitive information for like a 5% uh, discount. So I would start with a 10% and if it's not working, I would experiment with 15 or 20% discounts. Okay, 20 maximum. I actually wanted to comment here because, uh, you know, like last Black Friday, I heard the um, opinion that like people uh, were already so tired of these like uh, discounts that uh, brands offer. And uh, that's why actually not many people were waiting so um, anxiously at the, for the Black Friday. And that's why like the participation, the purchases uh, during this like uh, holiday season was not that high. So I think like it's one of the um, concerns for e-commerce is just to offer something more besides uh, discounts. Maybe you can give also some ideas what other things uh, are there um, like suites to attract customers uh, brands can offer. Yes, of course. I mean, uh, 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 during a Black Friday, during a Black Friday, I don't really have any other options. So if you're in the Black Friday, you have to offer discounts, I guess, I'm afraid. But th th those are special occasions during the year and in, uh, in the rest of the year, you can definitely play around with other type of incentives. Um, samples, for example. Uh, to try out certain products. Of course, it depends on the type of products you are selling, but samples usually work really well. Or again, for low intent visitors, the some kind of mystery, some kind of uh, chance to win, some kind of uh, like, hey, 
this is a just sign up for a mystery offer. Just using this very simple term, it usually converts super well and even without actually revealing anything what's behind it. And of course, what this mystery offer will actually mean will turn out to the user on the second page or the thank you page of this pop-up. But again, the conversion rate and the sign-up usually is, is really high. Or of course, if you are doing some kind of content marketing and you are actually uh, you, you um, attracted the users with some kind of article, for example, through a Facebook ad, then providing some extra information, some content upgrade connected to this article, to, to this education is again, usually working uh, super effectively. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Elena, if you would like to add something here, maybe? No, nothing to add here. Thanks so much, Chaba, for, for this intriguing suggestion. If I yeah. was an e-commerce marketer, I would like to try it. Yeah, I actually think that it's uh, really uh, great to combine um, these techniques uh, both for conversions on uh, web and uh, on mobile because uh, even though like mobile is getting more and more um, a common popular uh, for customers, uh, uh, anyways, we have a lot of customers who uh, go to web and they prefer and they feel more comfortable to buy, uh, to make this purchase decision from uh, web websites, right? So yeah, I, that's why I like this uh, combination uh, of techniques for web and mobile that we actually um, showed uh, today at the webinar. So I guess uh, we will finish here. Uh, thanks a lot for everyone, to everyone for being with us, um, for listening to the techniques, for the tips um, that our speakers uh, shared today. Uh, Chaba, thanks a lot. It was uh, really Thank insightful. You. Yes, I uh, hope to collaborate um, with Optimal in the next uh, um, activities. Elena, thanks a lot as well. And uh, um, I also invite everybody to visit our web uh, webinars page uh, because we have other webinars there as well for other industries, for other uh, stages of the customer journey uh, that you may um, find uh, useful for your business. And uh, until the next time, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot to all the listeners. See you next time. See you. See you next time. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.